And the UK has now doubled the amount of Ukrainian refugees allowed entry into the UK to 200,000 after coming under pressure for not doing enough compared to our European counterparts. Joining us now uh, is Dr Alan Mendoza from the Henry Jackson Society, uh, who says we can stop this from being a refugee crisis if we create a safe haven in Western Ukraine, alongside Steve Valdez Simmons, who says refugees have the right to go wherever they feel safe and secure. Steve Valdez Simmons, let's begin with you. Um, the EU appears to have been much more generous than mm. we have. Um, but apparently, according to the Home Secretary, we have security concerns. Well, it's very difficult to credit that. I mean, look at the borders of Poland and Hungary at this time. Are we seriously saying that there are security concerns with those people who are crossing and in urgent need? Are we saying that Poland and Hungary should be keeping its borders closed and holding people back for similar concerns in their nations? Of course we're not. Those concerns to us sound unreal and there is an urgency about this situation that really needs to be quickly addressed so that people can find a place of safety. Just playing devil's advocate, mm. uh, we have had Russian agents operating in the UK. We've seen uh, individuals being poisoned here in the UK. People might listen to what the Home Secretary says and think, right, that is a serious concern. Mm. Well, people might think about how those Russian agents arrived. They didn't arrive as people seeking asylum in this sort of chaotic scenario that yeah. affects refugees. They came through our immigration system on visas that were permitted them. No, devil's advocate, I'm shaking my head too. Yeah, um, they, 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 they flew in almost certainly uh, uh, under the guise of, well, other airlines, but, but a cheap airline and, 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 and killed somebody on our own territory in uh, Salisbury. Uh, they're not, they weren't hidden amongst refugees seeking safe ha haven. Um, uh, Dr. Alan Mendoza, um, if there ever was a, a, an example of what being a refugee represents, this is it, isn't it? Uh, well, yes, absolutely. I mean, you've got a case here where people are uh, being, you know, torn from their homes by the advancing Russian forces and fleeing the country. Of that, there is no doubt. So, why are we only allowing 200,000 in? Well... The, the reason for this is, firstly, the government's made it quite clear that it's only step one. In fact, step one became step two because the scheme quickly doubled in size just in, within one day. But I think that's something we haven't discussed at the moment, which is the Ukrainian government itself does not want to see a mass exodus right now on day six of this conflict. It's not, uh, you know, kind of obviously um, oblivious to the idea that its citizens may be killed, but at the same time, it doesn't want to suggest that the country's lost already, which is what a mass refugee flow of millions right now would do. Ukrainians are fighting for their lives. The Ukrainian government wants, you know, Ukrainians to stay as much as possible. And that's why I think we should be looking to create a space within Ukraine where they, people can flee to without having to leave their country even. Mm. Dr. Anna Mendoza, do you accept that uh, by opening up our doors and allowing... Um, sorry, Steve Valdez-Simmers, opening up our doors and allowing a, a huge number of people access, you actually encourage that flow which would demoralize the ukrainian position um i i don't think so and let's remember actually there have been close to 1.5 million people in ukraine internally displaced long before this recent invasion so the point of our refugee laws international laws of which we are supposed to be a part is to ensure guarantee that people who are forced to flee find a place of safety. We should stand exactly behind that. Whatever else we can do to provide safety in the country, if people need to flee, we need to be amongst those nations who are there with them. How popular, Dr Mendoza, do you think um, the UK government position is? Um, you know, we've taken back control of our borders and this is a clear independent position, but we're a very compassionate country um, we want to welcome with open arms people who are facing imminent bombardment or starvation. I mean, you suggest that actually we might encourage people to flee at the point where Ukraine wants them to stay. There are serious numbers of people who face losing their lives if they're not given safe sanctuary. Not oh. to mention the patriotic Ukrainians who are heading in the other direction in face of danger, you'd agree. 
Look, absolutely. Now, the, the, the key thing here is that, you know, we are a compassionate people. And at no point is anyone saying this is the final position on refugees. Now, the European Union has opened up a very generous scheme. So we've got all the countries of the European Union which already offer a haven. It's not that Britain is the only place where people can go. Again, I'm not saying that down the line we shouldn't change tactics, but right now it is not the most sensible thing to have pictures of millions of Ukrainians streaming into London, Paris and Berlin when Kiev is standing resolute against the Russian aggressor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we see those pictures anyway. Yeah. I mean, you know, we can't cover our eyes and pretend it's not happening. Well, that's why I think we should do something better on the ground than what we're doing right now. Are we doing enough? You had a section with a, a brave journalist who confronted the Prime Minister yesterday. Are mm. we doing enough? I would say the answer still, despite the unprecedented things we have done, which are worthy of noting. If you'd have said a week ago that we'd be in this position that we are now, you wouldn't believe it. But we've moved a lot in a week. We still need to move further because this aggression is unprecedented. And the opposition, to be clear, is to create a safe haven, if you like, including a no-fly zone west of Ukraine. Yes. That might prevent the exodus of refugees. The, not just for that purpose, but for the purpose of establishing a bit of free Ukraine where the Russians are not. There's been understandable concern about engaging the Russians in eastern Ukraine, central Ukraine. The Russians are not in western Ukraine. That's why we should make our move first. Steve, uh, currently we are taking 200,000. Um, that's, uh, you know, double what it was yesterday when we were challenging Dominic Raab over the definition of what immediate family is. How many people do you think would want to come here? I think, um, with the greatest of respect, we have to have a bit of scepticism. We have heard promises from ministers about Afghan safe safety. We've had promises in the past that have not been fulfilled. So the statement about a 200,000 target is frankly a good one if it's, if it's acted on. Yeah. But at the moment, this is an aspiration and there are not anything in place for that to be delivered as yet. So we will have to see it happen. If the UK does this for Ukraine, like it has not done for other um, nations where we've had see, we've seen lots of people having to flee conflict. If it does this, it will be a good thing. But those of us in positions like mine, we have to be on our ball basically to make sure that this actually happens because it has not happened in the past. All right. Well, Thank you both very much indeed. Yeah, thank you.